Hey, one of the new hidden features in uh, vSphere 6 is the ability to run unmap at the guest level uh, if you are indeed running vSphere 6 and if your virtual machine is running virtual hardware 11, which is the latest virtual hardware compatibility, and your virtual guest operation system is either Windows Server 2012 R2 or Windows 8. So first, even if you've already upgraded your VMware tools and your virtual hardware at the guest level, you also need to enable Unmap at the ES6 level where this VM or VMs are going to run. So in order to do it, here I have my vCenter web interface. You go to the Manage tab under Setting, under Advanced System Setting, and you need to go and look for the VMFS3 parameter. There you go. And that's the one. By default, this parameter will be zero. It needs to be changed to one. I've already changed it. And this is how to enable it the OS level at the hypervisor level, which will then traverse this command uh, to the guest level, or should I say it will not block the guest VM from sending unmap command uh, to the ES6 level. Now let's see what uh, we can do at the guest level. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is to configure the VM itself. So apart from running an OS that is supported, e.g. Windows 8.1 or 8, and Windows Server 2012 R2, and the latest VM tools and the latest virtual hardware, meaning virtual hardware 11, specifically this version, what we will also need to do is make sure that the drive that we are cleaning are configured as uh, thin drives. So if we go to this VM that we're going to do the testing on, we go to Edit Setting, and expand the drives. We can see that I've configured both the boot drive and the drive that I'm actually going to clean as a thinly provisioned. This is important. Uh, Unmap at vSphere at this at least stage will not travel through an eager zero thick drive or device or a lazy eager zero thick. So it must be configured as thin. Otherwise, when you will actually try to run Unmap from within Windows, it will give you an error on the drive that it cannot be optimized, which is one way of running Unmap at the guest level. So again, needs to be thinly provisioned. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to copy some uh, ISO files and other files to this VM, so we'll be able to clean them afterwards. So I'm just going to copy a lot of stuff to the D drive on uh, this VM. Just, uh, so we'll create some capacity on the, the drive itself. There you go. So we're starting the copy, and of course the capacity will also increase at the extreme array as more copies, more files are being copied into the VM itself. And I'm going to copy even more files because I want to show the impact of uh, Unmap and the way that it releasing the space. Okay, so we copied some file to the VM and this is the logical capacity that was used and this is the physical capacity that was used. I specifically try to copy unique files so we can see the physical capacity being reduced as opposed to the logical, e.g. the deduped and the capacity itself or the compressed capacity. Also, important to note is that if I will actually go to the data store of the VM, I want you to record this value and this uh, thing, this is the drive where we copy the files onto. And now what we're going to do is basically run Unmap. So by default, we can just run the defrag utility, which is this one. And what's important to note is that, A, this is the drive that we copy the files to. So this is the one we're going to run Unmap from. And by default, Windows already have a scheduler to run Unmap, which is this one. This is the default operation. If you're running vSphere 5.1 on Extreme IO, this parameter should probably be turned off because there is no uh, any benefit of running the fragmentation if the VM doesn't actually run Unmap, or, and it doesn't on vSphere 5.1. So uh, you should really check if it's on and off. However, we don't have the time to wait for the weekly scheduler, which again can be changed. And what we want to do is actually invoke space reclamation to run just now. So first, what we're going to do is, of course, delete all the files that I've just copied. Yep. Make sure there's nothing in the recycle bin. There is nothing there. And now we can actually analyze the drive and run optimize, which is really uh, starting to run the trim command on the VM itself. You can see the progress here, and we will also be able to view the progress here on the extreme IO array itself. We try to maximize it so we'll be able to see more of the screen itself. 
this is the bandwidth that is now starting to be used in order to run space reclamation. And here we will start to see the capacity getting reduced more and more and more and more. Let's go back to the progress here. We can see that we are around 85, almost about 100%. So from a logical perspective, the BM is done doing the trimming and now the array is still doing the unmap command itself. Monitor the bandwidth and monitor the physical and the logical capacity here. And that's it, it's finished uh, running Unmap. So as you can see, the capacity returned to what it was before I started to copy those files to the drive. And that's it, that's in itself, at least in my humble opinion, is a very good reason to upgrade to vSphere 6. Again, it doesn't support all the operation system by default. For this, you still probably want to use third-party utilities like Raxco Perfect Storage or SDelete or things of that nature. But for modern operation system, you should definitely go ahead and explore this option in your environment. Also, if we go back to the VM data store that they're uh, residing or hosting those files, we can see that it's actually shrank the VMDK files as well. So again, another benefit from a data store perspective as well.